Good afternoon, Downingtown STEM Academy, and welcome back to another episode of STEM TV, the quarantine edition. My name is Ben Doyle, and I'm at the beach. And I'm Maddie, and we are very excited to be bringing you a very special edition of STEM TV today in a wellness special. In this episode, we will be focusing on ways to stay both mentally and physically well during a time that is full of so much confusion and alterations to our normal wellness routine. We're going to start off our show by focusing on mental wellness and the importance of staying mentally active during this time. Throughout this episode, we will feature interviews with some of STEM's incredible support staff. Though all of your teachers and peers are there to support you as well, these specific people have dedicated all their time at STEM to supporting students in whatever way they may need. To kick everything off, myself and my fellow senior, Savannah Miller, who is essential in starting STEM's awesome Avidum Club and has dedicated a lot of her time to helping others during hard times. We had the wonderful opportunity to sit down and speak with DASD school psychologist, Dr. Carr. Now, some of you may not know Dr. Carr as she is not located in the STEM building as permanently as our guidance staff or prevention specialist, but she is an integral part of STEM support staff. Here to talk with Maddie and Savannah about wellness tips and to allow you to get to know her better is Dr. Carr. So let's get into our first question. So what is um, your professional background and what specifically do you do to um, support students in the district and students at STEM specifically? Um, well, I am a school psychologist, so my background leading up to that um, is that I received my undergraduate degree in psychology and a minor in writing and rhetoric at James Madison University in Virginia. I then attended um, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, where I received my master's in education in psychology, um, and then my school psychology certification um, in 2009. And then I also received my doctoral degree in school psychology um, with a concentration in neuropsychology um, from Indiana University of Pennsylvania in 2016. Um, from there, I have been a school psychologist at a school in the Downingtown Area School District since 2013. I worked at a school district up in Berks County prior to coming to Downingtown for four years. Um, so I primarily have service students at the elementary level, but I have also service students at both the middle school and the high school level. Um, currently, I work um, at STEM Academy as a school psychologist, as well as Beaver Creek Elementary School in the district. Um, and a, a lot of the ways that I support students is through um, intervention teams. I'm a member on the intervention team at STEM, our student support team, where I help to kind of troubleshoot um, difficulties that um, either some teachers or students are having with classes um, to come up with strategies to support students through that, um, as well as different kind of building initiatives that we're working on to kind of help our support our students at what we call the core level or um, everybody level, if you will, um, for support um, with that. Um, so I work primarily with our school counselors as long, um, along with our prevention specialist um, and the dean of students when we're working together on that team. I also work um, individually with some students when we're looking to troubleshoot and see if a student is in need of more support by trying to identify what those needs are and how we can support them better as well. So the first question I have for you is uh, if you could outline the differences between atypical and typical emotions for students, especially high school students during this time. We all have emotions. We all have a range of emotions. Um, and a lot of those emotions are typical, especially in a, in a um, situation like this that's kind of more unprecedented. Um, so it's pretty normal to have emotions right now. Um, and some of them might be a little bit more uncomfortable um, emotions because this is an uncomfortable situation, right? Um, so emotions in and of itself aren't necessarily atypical. Um, so you'll hear a lot that somebody will describe themselves as feeling anxious about something. Anxiety is a feeling that people have um, when there's something either unprecedented or anticipated that's coming up. And some level of anxiety can actually be a good thing because that's showing that there's motivation to a task, um, even though it can feel a little bit uncomfortable. So if you have like a test coming up um, and you have that kind of butterfly feeling in your stomach right before it's handed to you, that's what that is, it's a little bit of motivation towards that task. When those things become atypical, when they start to derive you from your everyday kind of either functioning or your life, so if they start to interfere with things. So for example, if your anxiety gets to the point where you're not coming to school or you're not going to an anticipated event such as like a, you know, a birthday party or um, a meet and greet kind of situation. Um, when those things start to interfere with those everyday type situations, that's when things can become a little bit more atypical, where it might be time to kind of reach out and talk to somebody about what those feelings look like to come up with some strategies of how to overcome 
um, those situations that are provoking this emotion. Um, along that line, what are some healthy coping strategies that students and staff can use while we're still following stay-at-home orders? Well, there's a lot of different things that, um, you know, people can try um, to help with this. Um, one thing in particular, because right now, one thing everyone has a lot of, or most people do, not everybody's in the same situation, but you might find yourself having um, more time than you usually have. So it's a good time to kind of pick up something that maybe you've always wanted to try, such as a new book that you really wanted to read, um, or um, maybe a hobby such as running or um, maybe a different type of new video game or you know, something along those lines. Um, also interacting with the people that you are um, cohabitating with, like such as your family or if you have siblings or guardians or people that, um, you know, that you live with. And I know sometimes we're a lot right now with those people a lot, but I think it's a good opportunity to kind of just you know, get to know those people a little bit better. Um, as well as to just kind of enjoy some activities together as either as a family or as a unit um, in order to, you know, bond and get, get along um, with that. Um, I'm trying to think what else could be fun things to do. It, it really is a good opportunity to kind of maybe just explore things that maybe you have not um, had the opportunity to do. Um, but also, I think it's important to keep those connections established. Um, and, you know, I found myself thinking about if this particular situation had happened even when I was in high school, um, which was longer ago than I want to admit. Um, but we didn't have things like social media. Um, we didn't have, not everybody had a cell phone at that point. Um, texting was kind of just getting started. So thinking about those ways to stay in communication with people that um, you really have good established friendships or relationships with, it's important to keep that social piece up. Um, in order to just know that everybody's experiencing this collectively. Um, it might be different levels of experience for everyone, but we're all in a very similar situation and keeping those social connections um, established is really important. Um, along those lines, how can the STEM community practice self-care during this kind of time? Um, I think it's important to, um, along with the self-care, um, piece of it and again this is something that I found myself kind of challenged um, with as well um, just being with my children all day long um, but I think just establishing some sort of routine is helpful and putting in time that's strictly for you during that is is really beneficial um, so one thing that I've been trying to do in my routine is that I've been trying to get outside and go for a run um, and that's kind of my time during that, but putting that on my, you know, docket for the day, if you will, um, has been helpful because it's something to look forward to, um, and it's also something that I'm making sure that I'm, I'm doing by kind of scheduling that in. Um, one thing that I would also recommend for everybody is kind of having some sort of a schedule for the day. It doesn't have to be a strict by the minute type schedule or even something that looks like a schedule when you guys are at school with your classes but just knowing that okay in the mornings I try to get my work you know so many classes you know you know checked into looked into work done for that where in the afternoon there might be a little bit more time for um, some self-care things um, but just kind of coming up with you know, some sort of schedule that works for you. And for some people, the self-care might be better in the morning and then focusing on the school later on the afternoon. One thing about self-care is that it's very individual. And so what may work for somebody may not work for somebody else, and that's okay. Um, kind of similar to like study strategies. For some people, certain things work really well. And for others, they're like, I can't learn that way. Um, that it's very similar for self-care as well, that there might be similarities. Um, but some people really strive for that, you know, want to take kind of either like social distance walks with like a neighbor or, um, you know, having those kind of conversations daily while others may kind of crave some time where they're just kind of alone, whether it be during a run or reading a book or things like that. And one of the last few questions I have for you is, uh, what is resilience and how can the STEM students and staff foster a mindset of resiliency right now? So resilience is a sense of um, being able to overcome either a challenging or an adverse situation or scenario. So resilient people have been through situations um, that have kind of, they've come out on the other side having a sense of 
security and strength based upon that scenario that they they faced and overcame. So right now, collectively, you know, as a society, we're facing kind of a a, a macro adverse situation, if you will, through the pandemic. And so um, one thing that we could all kind of focus on is that we are going to overcome this and we're going to come out on the other side, learning things from the situation that are going to help us know how to cope um, and to be able to follow through with future challenges that we we may face. And so, for example, um, uh, when I was your age, I was in high school um, and when, um, when I was in high school, September 11th happened, my second week of school um, in New Jersey. And so that was kind of one of the first situations that I had faced and my kind of cohort of students had faced um, where we were kind of brought to reality very, very quickly with a really sad situation that occurred. Um, and a lot of changes as a result came from that situation. Um, and this is the first kind of collective scenario and experience this pandemic um, that has been reminiscent of that in some ways because it happened kind of suddenly. It's a different situation, but there are similarities in that kind of collective community feeling um, of, you know, we're all going to kind of, we're all in this together. We're going to, um, you know, overcome this together. But there are changes that are going to probably result from this situation as a result of the pandemic. And so resiliency is kind of taking those um, things that you can learn from those adverse situations and applying them in the future to be able to face that next challenge that will come your way. And in, in life, there are challenges that come. Some of them are bigger <laughs> than others, and some of them are more individual and adverse in that they happen in, on that more individual level. Resilience is the, it's the ability to overcome those things. And so that takes an amount of coping and knowing yourself as an individual what you need in order to overcome that adverse experience. But it also, and knowing if when it's time to reach out and ask for support in order to do that. And so right now that it's very important for everybody to know that there are people within the school, even if we're not physically there, that are here to support you, whether it's our counselors, myself as a psychologist, Mrs. Yost as our prevention specialist, your teachers, um, the administrators, all of us are here if there's somebody that you need to reach out to, whether it be just you know, a question about an assignment or if it's about just bigger kind of things or if there's somebody to talk to um, that's different. There's somebody that you in your house, um, we're here to help support this, um, but knowing knowing from somebody who's been through a similar situation um, in at a similar age to you guys, I was a senior when September 11th happened. Um, knowing that we came on the other side of that um, and you know grew as people as a result of that, um, in a lot of ways, is empowering when you look back on it, and that's what resilience is. And I'm hoping that. That's what will be learned from this situation, too. Um, now, to wrap things up a little bit, and on the topic of resilience, I think a lot of people are in this position where they kind of feel like giving up, and it's hard for them to adopt that mindset of resiliency. I was just wondering if you have any quick tips for how to stay motivated during times like this, and for some people, how to just get out of bed in the morning. Right. So I think going back to... Um, looking not only what that big picture is, but then bringing it back to what do you want for yourself today can really help people with that individual motivation piece. So that's where that suggestion of a schedule kind of comes in and even kind of planning ahead for the next day um, and scheduling and penciling in those things that are enjoyable for you as an individual too is very important as part of that don't just over schedule your stuff with all the non-preferred assignments that you want to do for the next day and expect that you're going to wake up you know the time that you want to in order to finish them um, putting in things like individual reinforcement or um, little rewards for finishing what um, you want to get done and accomplishing um, and really spreading things out to the point where you know they are accomplished it accomplishable um, or a, a goal that you can can um, can master is really important um, and I think also just thinking kind of big picture too in terms of you know it, it, if you schedule things like um, a weekend quote-unquote event you know pre-pandemic that might have been like a social event that was in person but you know maybe 
holding that social event online, um, you know, could be uh, something that could be individually motivating for, for groups of people too. And it's, it's good to hear that you guys are doing those kinds of things, um, you know, with one another and supporting one another in that way. So um, just as like a closing thing, um, how can students reach out to you? So I'm a support person within the building, just like the school counselors are. I'm not at STEM on a daily basis when we're there in person. I'm typically there on Thursdays and Fridays when I am in the building. I do tend to go between my building assignments for that reason. So I'm not there daily like the school counselors are. Um, but I, I have my main, my office is in the main office. Um, so I, I'm there on Thursdays and Fridays. Um, but now, and you know, uh, with us being virtual, the best way to get a hold of me would be through email. So my email is hcarrr at dasd.org um, if a student had a question or a concern that they wanted to reach out to me. Um, and again, I'm another support person in the building. So if somebody felt comfortable coming to me about, you know, anything, whether it be a, a worry, whether it be about um, having questions about um, attacking an assignment or um, just wondering if they're in need of some additional support to do those kinds of things. I'm one of many people that they can reach out to for that. Um, and really, I don't want to kind of put into boxes what those topics are because we're, we're all accessible. Um, but I want to be one of those people that is accessible for students. So um, really, if there was ever a question or need or concern, please feel free to reach out. Special thank you to Dr. Carr for taking the time to sit down with us. As she talked about, she is another person you can reach out to if you need support, whether that be academically, emotionally, or with troubles outside of school. Her contact information can be found in the description below. Next up in our mental health section of the wellness special are some people that you may know or rather should know very well, STEM's fantastic guidance counselors. You have definitely at the very least seen their faces around the building, but hopefully you have also been stopping by every so often to say hello. Or some of you may be like me where I go and bother them every single day. I got to sit down with these wonderful women last week to talk about what they've been up to as well as to walk you through some of the resources that are available on the STEM Counseling School G page. Here to talk more about these resources is Mrs. Glowick, Mrs. Wallen, and Mrs. McGavin Wedlick. So to start off, how is everybody? What have we been doing to keep keep up with uh, the times and keep sane? Uh, well, we're gonna try to we're trying to stay sane. <laughs> I think we're with, <laughs> we're with you guys on that. We understand it's a crazy time. I myself um, came back from maternity leave while this all was happening. So. I thought I would be coming back in to see everybody, but you know, I came back and we were already in virtual learning. So it's been a lot to get used to, but I have been here at home with my husband and my four-year-old and my three-month-old son, Miles. So that that's taken up the majority of time. Yeah, we're all kind of in the same boat. Uh, we are part-time mom, part-time counselor right now, full-time nothing. Um, <laughs> But we're, we're all managing. Um, I impulsively bought a swing set for my children the second week of quarantine. So we are outside as much as we, uh, we can be. So that's, most of my days are just spent between kind of monitoring emails, being on Zoom calls and getting the kids outside as, as much as I can. Yeah, I would say the same for me. I think it's just trying to find the balance of like being a counselor, being a mom, um, I have two little guys, a two-year-old and an eight-year-old, so I'm trying to learn second grade math at the same time. It is no joke, so if anybody has tutoring opportunities or needs hours, reach out to me. Um, but I think it's just trying to figure out how to be forgiving of yourself as well, because not every day is going to be perfect, so I think you just kind of have to try and find the good, if you can, in every day. Uh, and every week I check it off saying we're one week closer to the end of the school year. So uh, I think the hardest part is that we miss you all because we just love seeing you guys. So um, Zoom has been nice so that I can connect with um, my caseload. Um, but again, just trying to figure it out day by day. So one of the big questions I know, and I know Mrs. Gluck, we have talked a lot about this. Do you have <laughs> any Netflix TV show movie recommendations that you've been kind of getting on. I know Tiger King is probably one of them, but other than Tiger King, <laughs> I heard a lot about Tiger King. Watch that. I did watch that. I had to jump on board. Well, I'm trying to think. I, I definitely, everybody knows I'm like a big horror movie junkie, so I finally watched Midsummer. 
It is not for the faint of heart. Also, it's rated R, so none of you are allowed to watch it. (laughs) (laughs) Second, for Netflix, probably right now I am binging the second season of Dead to Me. Um, That's a good one. I just finished in one day the fourth season of Working Moms, which probably would not be, you know, relevant or funny to any of our students, but for people in our age group with little ones, it's on point. Um, But that's kind of it. And then honestly, I I joke, but it's really true. My therapy right now is watching the Great British Baking Show. (laughs) I like to watch it and it makes me feel happy because, well, Maddie, you know, we both have an affinity for British television programming. And I I watched all of Downton Abbey. I was definitely born at the wrong time. Um, and in the wrong country, I guess, but I love the British baking show is the best. They're just so kind and they make baked goods and it's really, it's something special. I love it. It makes me feel happy. <laughs> um, you, Wallen? Oh, well, it was Tiger King immediately. And all the memes that go with Tiger King are like the gift that keeps on giving. Um, like, I think my hands down, my favorite meme is like when one of Trump's advisors is like whispering in his ear and he's like, I think it's time to release the tiger documentary. <laughs> like, <laughs> <just> <laughs> <correct> everyone. <laughs> yeah. Like America needs this right now. Like we must introduce Joe exotic. And, um, I think you guys are going to get to hear from Dr. Carr, our psychologist, uh, in this edition of STEM TV. And she and I were just texting, because the psychology of that show is just fascinating. And so that's typically what I watch, aside from like total train wrecks like Tiger King. Um, I watch a lot of true crime because I'm fascinated in a, t- a twisted way, I guess. But then I also have an affinity for Great Britain. So I usually fall asleep most nights to Downton Abbey. Um, I've watched it easily 10 times. Um, luckily my husband likes it too. So right now we're on a Jag fix. Oh, Jag. Jag. late nineties, early two thousand. Oh, right. like, mm, it, yeah. So we're watching <laughs> Jag America, uh, as from, but I, I did binge cheer. That's a good, that's a good feel good one. Too. Oh, cheer is a good one. Cheer is good. Mm-hmm. Let's see for the wide licks. Um, Usually I don't get the remote, so we're either binge watching Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, uh, Clarabelle's my favorite, or uh, the Garfield show, that's just fabulous. Um, But then when I do get to kind of have my own stuff, Friends, it's a classic, I love it, I live it. Um, And then the Golden Girls just started coming on. So I don't know if you all know the Golden Girls, it is important television (laughs) that you all need to watch and that is my assignment to you all so yeah she's my girl she reminds me of my nanny kate um so we'll do that and then we do movie night friday nights so um i always try for a new one but secret life of pets 2 has basically been on our playlist probably for the past five weeks so um yeah just uh, mindless television i can't Mm -hmm. think too much when i watch tv i love reality shows so marrying millions i just finished that one Mm -hmm. um probably not maybe appropriate for the students but (laughs) it's a good one (laughs) um but yeah no i love mindless tv i love anything reality and anything like e-news like that's just my dream to be on e-news so <laughs> as long as I can get my fix and the important news of the day, uh, I'll go to eBay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we also impulsively purchased Disney Plus. Yes, we did too. Yeah. Best. <laughs> oh, and I got the Hulu package. So they, we're yeah. stimulating the economy That's here. Right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So getting into some more specifics. Um, I know we have talked about um, and seen on Schoology and in the guidance counselor updates. Um, that there are many different resources online that we can reach out to um, in terms of like calming rooms and wellness tips and things like that. So could you guys kind of walk us through some of those online resources that are available? Yeah, so I can start. Um, I think 
one of the things that's overwhelming sometimes with resources is there's so many of them <laughs> and people don't really know what's legit and where to start. So everything that we're going over today, I just want you guys to know it was created by um, people at STEM. So really created with a lot of thought and concern and trying to pick things that we think are relevant. So real quick, I'll share with you um, something that Mrs. Yost, who is our prevention specialist, created. It's called the STEM Academy Calming Room. And there's a lot of great resources on, on here. We can't take credit. She's fabulous. She designed everything and put it all on here. But um, there's a lot of great exercises that you can try. So uh, breathing exercises, we, we push a lot about mindfulness in the counseling department. Um, and Mrs. McGavin Widelick is going to talk about that, but a big part of mindfulness is breathing. So going through some exercises with that, all of these things are clickable. Um, so you can go through and pick something that seems the most appealing or something that you might be in need of. So just the benefits of it from how to do it quickly if you have a little bit more time. Um, there's some guided meditations, which is really what mindfulness is all about. So kind of taking you through step by step of getting in that mindset and doing some practice. Um, study sounds. So if you're somebody who uh, likes to play music <clears throat> while you study or like you need a white noise machine or you need something just going on in the background, there's a few different things that you can click on there. Um, and then she's got quotes and yoga. I mean, this is kind of like a one-stop shop for everything. So I, I often hear from students like they're on overload with technology, which I think we all are right now. So where's like an easy place to go to get everything as opposed to searching for it on YouTube. And so, um, and then different calming activities. So She's just got it all here. It's a quick place to go. So definitely check it out because um, some of these exercises or practices could give you a little bit of relaxation. And um, I think it's a, it's a good thing to give a try. Well, I'm sure you're all tired of hearing from me as I post a barrage of posts every single day on behalf of Avidum um, on STEM student life. But the reason that we're doing that is because we recognize that people um, reflect and access things in different ways. So we're just trying to provide opportunities for kids to um, think about mental health in a reflective way that works for them. So last week we focused on awareness and it was a lot about just trying really hard to change the conversation around mental health. Um, it shouldn't be something that people are embarrassed to talk about. And so that's why we're trying to educate people more about different um, mental disorders so that people don't dance around the subject, that they talk about it. And our Vedum students feel very empowered to share their own stories, share the stories of their family members, um, and try to just destigmatize the conversation. We're also gonna talk about music and exercise and eating well and all the things that you can do to really take care of yourself. Um, because these are extraordinary circumstances and you might typically have been just trucking along fine in life and not really ever had some challenges. And I'm hearing from families that this is the first time that they're seeing their, their child really struggle in this way. And so it's really important that you take care of yourself differently um, than you did in the past. Uh, so Avidim is also going to offer opportunities for people to talk about mental health. Um, we're going to do gratitude challenges. There's a bucket list challenge where you can win prizes. Um, so if you follow um, Sam Avidim, them on Instagram you can learn more about that but we are just trying to push it from like all different angles and I guess my biggest message is that there are kids that are out there willing to talk to other kids we recognize that adults aren't always your first choice and there are other kids in our student body that are open and willing to talk to kids at any time um, if they're really struggling they know what to do um, our Avedum students know what to do with information and how to help other kids. So please don't feel alone. You have an army of adults here through STEM, but you also have it within your peers um, through Avedum and, and students that aren't involved in Avedum. Students really care about each other at STEM, and I think that's one of our favorite things and why we love STEM so much and why we miss you all so much is because it is a really special, unique community. I would agree with Mrs. as well, and we miss you all so much. So I'm really hoping that um, you guys are able to utilize some of the resources. And I'm going to share with you uh, my screen right now. And uh, part of, I'll share, and the ladies might laugh, like tech is not my thing. So this has been a whole new learning experience for Mrs. McGavin-Widwick. Um, but this is our counseling department Schoology page. 
And I wanted to share, so there's Mrs. Wallen's mindfulness moments that she had just um, provided, but right here's our access code. We did ask students prior to leaving us um, to join our Schoology page. Um, so if y'all wanna just jot that down if you haven't, but there's tons of information that's available. So I'm gonna go to materials. So personally for me, mindfulness is like my go-to. I do it every night before I go to bed. I have the Calm app on my phone and I just pick a meditation. Um, a lot of it is usually related to stress or those over anxious feelings about the day. And I do that practice before I go to bed. So I do think there's that belief of practice what you preach. Um, and I think it's like anything, you have to create it as a habit. So you might try it once and not feel like it's for you and that's okay. It's just giving um, yourself the opportunity to find something that works so you can just be present in that moment recognizing that there are those stressors, but giving yourself the opportunity to have a space to learn those breathing techniques or listen to a guided meditation. Um, so I do wanna share with you all the wellness and mindfulness activities folder. Uh, Mrs. Yost, who did the awesome virtual calming room, also went in and added a folder. Um, and we've kind of all added different things that we felt would be helpful. So I mentioned that I do the Calm app she does have a list of free mindfulness apps that you can check out. So hopefully it um, opens up and I apologize if it doesn't, I do not have the best connectivity, but on your end, I'm certain it will open up. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can practice mindfulness. Again, it's about being present. It's being in that moment and learning just different breathing techniques or um, as I mentioned before, guided meditations just to kind of help you work through some of those emotions. So the wellness and mindfulness activities is another option if you're not wanting to do the virtual calming room where everything is right there at your fingertips and you certainly can peruse it. You will see a lot of the activities that are posted here that have moved over to the calming room because she wanted you all to have a platform. Um, but again, it just gives a lot of different areas um, of opportunities for you to just explore. The high school coping skills practice guide at meditation is absolutely a good one as well. Um, I do think though it does take time. So like I said before, give it, give it a couple times before you turn off. Um, something pretty easy to do is that opportunity that Mrs. Wallen just talked a little bit about that gratitude and that gratefulness. So you wake up in the morning and you kind of identify three things that you're grateful for. And at night, maybe at, you just start to identify three things that you really did well that day. So it's really just starting to put into perspective. Like it might not be perfect all day long, but I'm sure you can think of one, two, or three things specific um, that you did do well or you are proud of. Um, it's just giving yourself the opportunity that when we are it's facing the uncertain, these are some things that you can share within yourself and kind of control that unknown. Um, but I do encourage you to utilize our school counseling website uh, page if you're comfortable with looking at it from a kind of a, an attachment piece or go to the virtual tour. But um, the Calm app is an app that I use daily. Um, and the mindfulness app, uh, the free mindfulness websites will, you can download to your phone and you can kind of access them in that way. Um, and it tracks, so you can kind of get reminders of when it's time, or you can set your own system and preferences and just start to explore just different opportunities and guided meditations that you might find um, helpful to you. Uh, we use mindfulness, as Mrs. Gluck mentioned, a lot in our practice as counselors with our students. I find that when students are feeling very overwhelmed, anxious, or stressed, just taking some breaths and just taking a break can help put a whole new perspective on things. So I'm hopeful that you'll take advantage of some of the opportunities Mrs. Yost and Avidam are pushing out um, and also visit our counseling department Schoology page just for some extra information um, to help you out while you're at home. So one final thing, if we just wanna like go around, what is the one thing you miss the most about being at STEM? The people, 100%. Yeah. Um, I love the people I work with. I love our students. So just being there and getting 
a, being able to see everybody and talk to everybody and just kind of the vibe of STEM. I, I definitely miss that. So I'm looking forward and my fingers are, are crossed very hard that we're, we're all back there come the fall and we can all be together again because that's, that's the best part. It's definitely the pizza in the cafeteria. It's just so good. <laughs> Uh, well, I shouldn't, I shouldn't joke about the pizza because some days that's like all we get for lunch is like we shovel down a slice of that pizza. Yeah. So, uh, no, I shouldn't. I mean, it's, it's my students. I, I say this to kids all the time and I feel like by the time you're in 12th grade, you believe us. But when I talked to my ninth graders, I was like, you know, I got into this cause I like kids. Like, and I feel like they're like, mm, I don't know about that. And, but by 12th grade, I think you guys know, like. We genuinely love working with kids, and um, there's a reason that we chose this profession and this career, and um, we're passionate about it. Um, and that's why I love our department and our bigger um, STEM student um, support team, because they're all very student focused. And so it's really hard um, for us to not be with students. It's it's similar to any other profession. If they couldn't do, you know, doctors not having patients farmers not having cows like it could you know anything <laughs> like you know that's like what we do that is like where our work happens and so to be doing it from a distance like this is really really hard on on us too um and so we yeah we're really hopeful we're going to be back together with you guys soon i would echo the same thing that the ladies just said we miss our people we miss you all so much i am always energized just by the amazing effort and just determination that everyone has. So to not be able to see that and be in the presence of it, I think it makes it very hard. We got into these profession because we're people, you know, we're people people, if that even makes sense. So just to not have that energy, um, it's just hard. I, I do agree that as we continue to work with you all through each grade, we get to know you better. I think sometimes my seniors will say, I wish we did this sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and I really wish that our freshmen and sophomore and juniors and seniors that are watching this, you just know that we're just another piece of the puzzle to support you at STEM. Um, our goal is to help and in any way. So I think by not having access to you, though we can do Zooms and we've been doing that and we, I feel like my day is better when I do Zoom calls with students because I'm seeing you all. But to get back into the building and just to walk around and just see us all get to the place that we love um, is what I'm looking forward to most and what I miss most. Um, I don't miss my commute. I won't lie about that. Um, but I just miss just being able to walk in and just seeing everybody doing their thing. So I just hope everyone is staying well and that you all are taking care of yourselves. And you know that there are so many people that are willing to help at any time you might need it throughout this time apart. I miss you. Absolutely. And I know that the students, we miss going into the counseling office every day. And if I can like just echo a point that I think all three of you made at some point to the underclassmen coming from a senior that it was in the guidance department like every day saying hello. I know that like I was in your situation where coming into STEM, you were like, oh, the guidance department, I only go there if I'm having a problem. No, <laughs> like, go there and say <laughs> hi. They're great people. Mrs. Um, Zach will give you a Jolly Rancher if you go. Yes. If you need some incentive, she has candy. Uh, <laughs> Conley's in there sometimes. You might get to pet a dog. I, if you yep. need incentive, they're there, but you really should. They're really awesome people. Um, but for now, we will say goodbye to our counselors, but you can always reach out to them with any issues you are having. And I'll put all their um, emails and things in the description at the bottom of this video. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Awesome. Thanks, Maddie. Miss you all. Thank you to our wonderful counselors for walking us through those resources. All three of their emails can be found in the description below, along with the access code to the Schoology group page. For the last interview of our wellness special, Savannah Miller is back, and this time she is sitting down with one of her final pieces of STEM support staff. Here to talk more about how she supports students at STEM and to allow you to get a chance to know her better is Mrs. Yost. So what is your position at STEM? Um, what is your background and how are you available to support students? So my position is the prevention specialist and my background is, I have my license in um, clinical mental health counseling. And I also have a specialized in addiction studies. 
So that I worked at um, like a rehab for a year and did like my clinical work there. And I also have a teaching certificate for yoga and meditation. So those are like mindfulness is like a big concentration for me because I think that it helps with a lot of like what we deal with on an everyday basis. Um, some of the things that I do for students is the students who already see outside counselors, I may get like a release of information and help to provide support for them in school, like working in tandem with their counselor to sort of keep their skills and their anything that they're using to manage stress, anxiety, or whatever else they're going through in school. So I'm like another layer of protection. We do have some students who have been in and out of treatment and I'm a liaison between the treatment programs and STEM sort of help to facilitate conversations with teachers and work with the counselors to like make sure work is at an appropriate level. Um, I also run the SAP program, which is new to STEM. We didn't have a SAP, SAP program before. So um, we just got everything online towards the end of the year and there are maybe four other teachers that work with me. And then in general, just providing skills for students. I ran a group with 11th and 12th graders last year, or yeah, last this year. And it was a stress and anxiety group to sort of, like I said, to give skills yeah. and provide them with like tools that they could use. But what I found in running that group is your schedule at SAM is so loaded. And you know, with 12 cycle days, doing doing a lunch group was like really difficult because you guys, like that's the only break that you guys get sometimes. So I came up with the idea after doing a couple of Zooms with um, Avita mm -hmm. that I, I think it might be a better idea to work and do like workshops for you guys. Like maybe offer one workshop a month and then like have a sign up sheet where you can like you'll know a description of what it is working on there like we could do progressive muscle relaxation but then I'd have the entire period which would really give you the ability to get into a practice and and use it and see how you like it so I hope to roll that out with the counselors next year that's awesome yeah I saw that we had scheduled some zoom uh sessions with you through Avidum, I was able to join, but it was really cool that you were able to provide that for students. Yeah, um, I think that they enjoyed it and it was nice. I mean, I think for me, the personal aspect of being face to face with someone is so important. So I know this is the best that we can do right now. And I think we're all trying to adapt, but I look forward to being able to see you guys in person again, because that truly like that exchange of energy is pretty important. Yeah, definitely. I agree. So on the, on the note of mindfulness, what are some mindfulness techniques that students can practice at home, especially during uh, COVID-19? So I don't know if you looked at the virtual calming room, but I did put some practices like simple beginning beginner practices. And I was going to add some more advanced practices. The most simple is, because we all bring our breath with us everywhere, right, is to try, if you're, let's say you're stressed about a test. So a lot of times what, we, what we're not like connecting with is that stress and anxiety doesn't live in the present. Like worry and fretting, that lives in the future. It's our mind projecting to the future and like regret and disappointment live in the past. So if you can be present in the immediate moment, you free yourself from those things. So getting centered and taking a moment to close your eyes and remind yourself like where you are, like I'm at STEM, I'm safe. Like I studied for this test. Like I can feel the support of the chair underneath of me be aware of your breath and take some deep breaths. I mean, you can do that in a matter of two minutes and really no one would know but you what you were actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are some like j just different iterations of that that would help you depending on like what the situation was. Um, I know that a lot of times 
when I'm talking with the counselors, we like to, at the beginning of um, anything that I'm doing with the students, it's just like bring awareness to like where we are. What's your purpose? Because yeah. I think sometimes you get like spun up in your head with all these ideas and, and you start like thinking like ahead of yourself. Like, what am I going to say next? As opposed to like being able to focus on an actual conversation with a person and being aware, like if I go into a meeting and know that my purpose is to make someone feel supported, my focus changes from what I'm saying to what I'm hearing. And I think that comes through. Yeah. So when, when we're working with teachers, when we're working with students, when students are talking to each other, I think just being aware of your purpose can like help hone you in to be mindful and sort of take out some of that worry. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely think STEM students, especially we're always living in the future. I, we're always afraid to fail or do something wrong and that'll impact our grades or what have you. But um, definitely having gone through it for four years, I personal experience and seeing my classmates struggle, I think just living in the moment is a big lesson that STEM kids need to, need to focus on learning. Yeah, um, you had mentioned some of the, one of the Zooms that I did, the last one, focused on just the idea of, we all tend to have these negative scripts that we play in our head, like whether it's like, oh no, I'm not gonna do well on this test or something even more personal. Um, being aware of what we say to ourselves is pretty important because you have to know you're doing it first. And then being able to stop that, stop those negative thoughts, and then adding in some affirmations. Um, it's really powerful. I just, I like to think of those like think of yourself as a house, right? And the things mm -hmm. that we say to ourselves is like what's written on the walls inside and that's how we filter our world. So if we have all these negative things that we're saying to ourselves and all the, these things that we're worried about, we're filtering everything through that. So we can make a conscious effort to turn those scripts around and make them into a positive so that we're like looking forward or looking out into the world in a more positive way. Yeah. Um, with that and all the great advice that you've given so far, how can students reach out to you? Oh, super easy. So mm -hmm. my email is jyost at dasd.org. My office is right next to the recording studio, the music room, on in the basement with no windows. But I do have a nice, very calming office and have like it generally brings a good vibe. And when in doubt, just go to the counseling office and someone will walk you down. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, before I'm done with my questions, is there anything else you wanted to ask? Um, no, I, I, you know what? I really, I've been so pleasantly surprised by my, the way I was welcomed to STEM. A lot of students have come into my office and just said, oh, who are you? And like, welcome, and what do you do? So I'd like to just encourage people to continue doing that. I know I'm trying to get out in the hallways and meet people, but I think putting my name with my face like this helps yeah. me an awful lot because I think sometimes people think, oh, well, I can't go see, like they're afraid to go to their counselor because they think, oh, well, they only do academics, which isn't true, as you know. But also with me, like I'm here to support students who are well and students who are struggling. So. I'm always open to coming in and helping out classrooms or partnering with any of the like clubs that we have that might be interested in like doing something for wellness or just stop by, say hi. Well, thank you. I can assure you that once you, you know, put it out there that your door is always open, STEM students will take advantage of that. <laughs> so next year, granted that we're back, I'm sure you'll get a lot of kids come in and say hello. I hope so. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. As with the rest of the support staff we've already heard from, Mrs. Yost's information can be found in the description below. Special thank you to all of our support staff members that joined us today. Uh, we are all very lucky to have you all there to support us while we make our journey through high school. And thank you for all you do for students every day. Um, as many of our staff mentioned, they are there for you, of course, but so are your fellow students. Your peers are there to help you too. So know that you're never alone in what you're feeling. And if you ever need help, don't be afraid to reach out to any of these staff members 
as well as your teachers, your administrators, your fellow students, because we all have your back. At this point in our show, we're going to be switching gears to talk about physical wellness and exercise. Physical and mental wellness can be, often be tied to one another, and being active and getting outside, especially during this time when we are homebound, can do wonders for your mental health. Mrs. Sevy and other members of STEM's Wellness Committee have been posting to Student Life about different exercise challenges and ways you can stay active from home. Here to provide us with some of those tips and to tell us more about what they have been doing to stay active while at home are three members of our STEM community. I've been running every morning and then doing some other workouts at night and also participating in the STEM Fitness Challenge. What I've been doing to stay active during this quarantine is I have been doing a lot of gardening, okay? Gardening involves a lot of lifting, pulling, um, carrying heavy things from one spot to another, uh, a lot of walking, and, you know, it's a good way to get outside in the fresh air and in the sunshine. So it's good old-fashioned physical labor, working in the garden, that's what I've been doing to stay active. I've also been chasing my two-year-old daughter around. She likes to play Ready, Set, Go. And so we will just run from one side of the yard to the other. We do that about 50 times a day. Uh, or, you know, she'll say, catch me, you know, a whole bunch of different times a day. And, uh, and so, you know, I'm chasing her around. The things that motivate me to exercise um, or just to stay active and get outside, especially now when we're all cooped up in the house. I would say that setting a goal in mind definitely helps to motivate myself to exercise, um, such as doing a certain number of push-ups each week or exercising a certain number of minutes. It helps me to push myself to exercise more frequently throughout the week. My favorite place to work out would be the gym, but obviously right now we don't have access to gyms. So my favorite places to work out around home are outside and in my bedroom. Any trail or just outside, anywhere I can get some fresh air. Uh, my favorite exercise is actually running and lifting. Um, so in the springtime, I'm usually you know out running as much as I can. Uh, with the, with the quarantine, you know, I'm not as active as I usually am. Right now, I really enjoy running because I can just get outside the house and get some fresh air. One of my favorite people to work out with is actually Mr. Podlesny, our very own Mr. P. Um, so Mr. P and I actually trained for a marathon together a few years ago. Uh, so we would get together on the weekends and run uh, on the Chester Valley Trail or down on Kelly Drive and run along Boathouse Row and past the art museum and all that. Uh, so I think if there's anyone that I could go for a run with right now, it would probably be Mr. P. If you start your day with a workout or exercise, you'll be more productive and feel better throughout that day. First, to set a goal for yourself, for example, um, make your goal like exercising 150 minutes each week. By setting a goal, it'll help you to stay on track. And if you're the competitive type, you can even virtual challenge friends or family and push one another to meet each other's goals. Um, another tip is to change your mindset around exercising. Don't think of exercise as just a way to lose weight or stay in shape. Think of it as the best thing that you can do for your body. Thank you to Mrs. Dinger, Sam, and Isabella for those great tips and ways to stay active during this time. Next up, we are excited to be joined by Mrs. Sevy herself, who is here to tell us more options to stay active at home, as well as to introduce the final exercise challenge of the year. Hello, everyone. I hope every single one of you is doing well and staying healthy. I am super excited to announce our last exercise challenge for this school year, as we want you guys to stay uh, healthy, active throughout the summer, and finish the school year strong. The first challenge that you can enter is to get yourself only three times this week into a 20 minute strength workout. Um, you can either use body weight exercises or use any weight that is laying around the house. The tricky thing is that you must do the workout with someone else. 
either virtually or while keeping social distancing if you are used if you are doing it with another friend uh, second challenge is to get yourself 10,000 steps each day for five days in a row this week and the third challenge is to do uh, five virtual yoga sessions um, please do not forget to submit proof of completion by either emailing me, Schoology message me, or by tagging me at STEM Wellness, uh, the new Instagram page. The winner is going to get a $25 gift card from Aces. So I hope this is a motivation for you, but please feel free to um, message me if you have any questions regarding the challenge. One more thing, I am going to submit links that you guys can follow along, but feel free to do whatever is working for you or wherever you guys find interesting to follow along. Uh, for now, I hope you guys stay healthy and get in the challenge. Thank you to Mrs. Sevi and the rest of the wellness committee for providing these tips and for posting exercise challenges for all of us to participate in. In the next few days, Mrs. Sevi will be posting more information about the final challenge and the way to sign up to participate. And that is all we have for you today on this wellness special. We hope that you're all staying healthy and happy during these times, but if you ever need somebody to talk to, feel free and don't hesitate to reach out to any of the people we talked with today. And once again, their contact information can be found in the description below. We hope to see you back next week for our final show of the year in which we recognize and celebrate the achievements of the STEM TV class of 2020. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay well.